Bitcoin and blockchains are programmable, so it's certainly possible and would be a best practice to build more sophisticated and secure practices on top of the basic transfer mechanism. So, and I think it's also a mistake that is often made that people assume because it's a new technology that we should start from scratch, but actually there are hundreds of years of financial experience of how to manage different types of transactions. So for example, as an individual, if you're buying a house, you would typically use the services of a lawyer who would escrow the funds. Uh, the transaction would be quite slow and verified first. If, if the paperwork is not correct, the funds wouldn't be released. So there's no reason in principle that that kind of careful transaction mechanism can't be used for cryptocurrency. And actually, because it's programmable, you can uh, sort of automate some of that and take some of the human elements out of it. So and again, re referring to existing frameworks for evaluate, sort of for transacting and managing security of transactions, I think Bitcoin is probably so sort of similar to two, two broad classes of assets. So one is uh, physical gold. So when people are managing physical gold, if the physical gold is stolen, there's not much you can do to undo that transaction, sort of short of finding the person who's taken it. And another, another similar asset type is, is paper cash, so, you know, or electronic money. So basically Bitcoin sort of blends aspects of both of those, and, but both of those systems interact with today's financial system in a, in a regularized way. So you, know, you can uh, buy gold via an ETF wrapper, and there are people who provide uh, secure custody, so secure vaults to manage that. And so I think it's, uh, it's more of a technology uh, evolution question of uh, building more secure uh, storage mechanisms. So it's um, it's actually possible for you know the, the way that exchanges work today, Bitcoin exchanges, is actually not using the full advantage of the programmability of uh, Bitcoin and blockchains. So it's essentially just that everybody who wants to transact. Uh, one transfers money to the exchange and deposits Bitcoin on the exchange, and then the exchange has kind of it's, it's doing multiple business roles. It's being a custodian and it's being a trading platform, and so it's it's possible to separate those, and that that is the way it's done in conventional finance. There are companies specialising in physical custody or custody of, of electronic shares, and so I think we're starting to see more of that coming into the Bitcoin ecosystem with new established players. Uh, taking on custodian roles, and for example, in the US, the New York Stock Exchange has started a company called Bact, which is trying to provide custody and one-day settlement for physical Bitcoin. Um, another sort of new possibility with uh, cryptocurrency, because it's electronic, global, and um, sort of immediate transactable, is that you can that you can use the programmability to transact without providing custody to a third party. So, particularly today where you deposit Bitcoins on the exchange in order to trade, there is, there is a program of possibility for the traders to keep control of their own assets. So whether they keep self-custody or they use the services of a custodian, they can essentially use the exchange's interface to place an order, but have to confirm the transaction on a, a hardware wallet, so a, a specialized piece of equipment, somewhat akin to the small calculator devices you use when you're doing online banking. So the keys for the crypto assets can remain in these kind of devices. Um, and in that way, you can place transaction orders on the exchange without having Bitcoins being in the custody of the exchange. And if we look at the failures, they've almost exclusively been custody failures on a part of the exchange. So I think you know we, we should see in uh, in the in the future uh, migration to a, a model where the exchange manages the order book, matches interest to buy and sell, but doesn't have custody. And in that model, basically, what the exchange has is a part, partly signed limit order. So if somebody were to compromise the exchange, all they'd be able to do is buy the coin at the advertised price, which is quite harmless. You can you know you can sign up as a regular user and buy it at today's price. So that avoids the custody risk. And I mean, the other point is the cryptocurrency and the programmability that it provides is quite interesting in providing new guarantees for the equivalent of banking mandates when multiple parties have to sign 
and transactions. So those kinds of rules can be affected by the network itself. Um, and so you can you can look at the you know, the smart contracts and being able to sign limit orders as something quite novel and new. Today you have to in today's financial system you have to rely on trusted intermediaries to do that. So a transaction settlement would happen in the back office of an institution, for example. So in the blockchain world, that can be that can happen on a public network. And you know, looking back at um, so Pinda mentioned some similarities with internet versus internet. So I think that what uh, the blockchain innovation does is basically move from a, a current financial infrastructure in a, in a networking sense of it being secured networks with insecure assets inside it. So the assets are essentially just uh, records in databases and backups of that information. So it, it moves that onto the open network by having cryptographically secured assets. And I think you know the main gap today is that those features are not being used off. So people are not retaining direct control of private keys and keeping private keys offline and out of the custody of centralized bodies. So I think there's, there's a lot of room to see uh, best practices improved. Um, another area that is a technical possibility that's not widely deployed is proving reserves. So it's possible for exchanges to prove frequently to their customers and to the public and to regulators the amount of assets they have. Uh, as I've said, ideally we can move to a model where the exchanges don't have custody and that removes the custody risk.